Let's tackle the letter W. Now, along with the letter M, the letter W is the most dense or compact of all the letters. It's got four vertical strokes, so we have to try to squeeze in one space. So we have to do a little bit of finagling to make it work. First of all, let me make reference again to my my pen angle diagram, one, two, three, four, five, because we're going to use this a little bit when we talk about the W. Happily, the W starts out the same way as most of the other chancery alphabets, holding my pencil in the unusual number four horizontal position, drawing a curve down to about seven, eight o'clock on a clock face, on a dial. So far, so good. Everything's ordinary. Next stroke, the same way. Holding my pen now in the traditional three and a half position, I pull it down all the way to the baseline. Piece of cake, nothing to it. Now it gets a little bit tricky. If I were to keep my pencil in the traditional three and a half angle, let me draw a line over here doing that. This stroke, you can even see that all the way over there, it would be too fat, too thick, too wide, too heavy. So we're going to adjust the angle of our pen. And in a sense, you see my whole arm, it's like my elbow moves further away from my body. My, my whole hand turns this way. You got that? You don't do this with your fingers or your wrist. You do it with your, with your whole arm. And now I'm going to go all the way probably to a number two position. I think this is the first time in all the letters that I've actually said we're going to do a number two position. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold my pen all the way up here so that this stroke will be nice and discreet, nice and thin. Come straight down to meet that, to meet that foot right there. There we go. Now, whew, that's done. We go back to the traditional three and a half position and pull that stroke. One of the challenges here, of course, is these two strokes, of course, need to be perfectly parallel to each other. If they're not, our eye will catch it. We'll see it really quickly. So we want to make sure it's parallel. Then I go back to, again, the number two position. And I'm just going to draw, starting here at the top of the letter the first time. Number two position, straight down to the baseline. Now, let's talk about this part of the letter up here. You have your cheat sheet in front of you, so you already know where we're going. I prefer, and there are calligraphers do it in many different ways, I prefer this final stroke to go extend above the guideline for the capital letters and have a little hook just like that. Now, you may be able to do that all in one stroke. Start up here, start up here, and go all the way down to the baseline. That's, that's probably preferred if you can. You might find that just that extra length to be a little bit troublesome, in which case you may do this first, as I did, and then bring this down to meet it. So there's the capital W. Before we leave it, I want to point out one more thing. Just as in all the, what we call the slant letters, which is an A, a V, M, N, W, X, and Y, <laughs> uh, we don't have any strokes that are parallel to the italicized angle. Does that make sense? Here's our italics angle. We don't have any strokes that line up. So what we're doing is really, a, 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 we have to achieve an optical illusion. We want all of these strokes to line up in such a way that it still feels as though the W is slanting in line with the italics angle. Does that make sense? It may take, I think I, I managed to do it fairly well with this example, it may take a couple times of practice. I'm being a little bit nice to you, aren't I? <laughs> it may take 47 and a half practices before you'll get it, before you'll get it so that it looks like it sits at the right angle. Let's go ahead then to the lowercase w. Much simpler, little hook there at the top, straight down to the baseline. But I'm going to do the same thing. It's simpler, but same thing. Number two angle up here. Start here, come down to the baseline, back to traditional grip, traditional angle. And likewise, I like my lowercase w to have that little raised curve at the end. Now, that, that's optional. It is very possible, depending on the creative context, when you're, when you're doing this not just for practice, but in a real creative artistic piece, this raised flag may, may get in the way of something up here, in which case it's perfectly appropriate to do that curve down here. Do you get that? So that's an option. 
All things being equal, I like the curve up there better, but down here is a good option. Okay, there's the lowercase. Let's talk about how you connect this W to the letter next to it, and the answer is basically, ya, uh, ya, don't. Would it work? Sometimes, depending on the context, would you go like this, perhaps to a letter O? That's not too bad. I don't think you would ever go all the way down, nope, to a baseline. Do you hear the way I'm talking? I'm just thinking out loud with you because I want you to develop this same kind of inner talk. It's your eye that tells you what's right and what's wrong. You can add anything to the end of a letter as long as you don't desecrate or, what's the word? That's a too strong a word. <laughs> as long as you don't uh, ruin the image of the letter, it still looks like a nice W. You can add anything to the end. Speaking of which, what do you do if, if the, the W is, in fact, the last letter in a line of type? The, the place to add that is off this top curve right here. You could go like this, you see, or you could go like this. Anything that works as long as you're not, in a sense, ruining the W. Okay, enough of that. Let's go to the felt tip marker. The capital W then, again, I'm holding my pen in the number four position. So this is kind of an interesting letter. You're holding your, your pen in three distinct positions. And I want you to understand that the purest, the, the proper, correct approach to calligraphy is you always hold your pen at the same angle. You didn't understand that? But then I'm messing with you and letting you in on sort of the inner secret of better calligraphy, which is we violate that rule. But while you're first getting started, sure, if you want to, hold your pen at that one angle all the time. But then as you progress, you're going to go with me and you're going to turn the pen like that to get just the, the discrete angle that you want. Straight and then a raised curve here. And if I do it right, it will look as though the W is leaning ever so slightly to the right. I think I, that one could lean a little bit more if I were at home practicing this, doing a row of Ws, I'd do it again and try to get it to lean just a little bit more. Lowercase w, again, traditional angle. See that my elbow move away from my body? get that number two angle, then back down, and the final stroke. Good enough. And again, I, in practice, I would do this over and over and over again. Let's move now to the dip pen, the pen that we know and love and sometimes hate, <laughs> the one that puts black smudges on the end of our fingers, right? the one that spits and stutters and makes messes, but the one that also makes the most beautiful marks. Capital W, starting here, horizontal, then curving down to about seven or eight o'clock. The next stroke is easy, holding the pen at the normal angle, all the way down to the baseline. Then my hand turns and I come up here and do that stroke. Again, my elbow comes back close to the normal position. Do the next stroke. I want to make sure that these two strokes are parallel to each other. And then the final stroke, I'm going to try starting all the way up here. Coming down there. There. Now that one, that W, I don't know if you can see this, it looks like it's leaning. This one is a little bit more upright. Do you see that? This one is leaning a little bit more, so that's appropriate to match the italicized angle. And finally, the lowercase w. Let me find a clean spot on the paper down here. Nice little hook there. Draw down. By the way, do you notice that my, my whole hand is moving? As, mu when, as much as possible in cal calligraphy, you want to use your arm, not just your fingers. When you're doing real small stuff, you can do your fingers, but when it gets even this large, most of the time you want to be moving your whole arm a little bit. For some of you, that will be uncomfortable at first, but keep working on it. You'll get, you'll get used to it soon enough. Final stroke. There we go. Whew. That's a nice W. I hope you're having fun and you're getting better every time you practice. Let's keep going.